Hello, my friends. Welcome to The Big Picture. Thanks for joining with us. This week, we continue our study of God's everlasting covenant. This week's study is entitled The New Covenant Sanctuary. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, Lord, we come to you because we want to say thank you for promising to dwell with us. Lord, thank you for the gift of your presence. I just pray that you'd be with us as we share and study and dig into your word today. We ask and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It's one of the beautiful realities of any relationship. It used to follow a, a predictable pattern. A committed relationship would lead to a marriage covenant. The couple would then live together and be blessed with children. Now, I'm only too well aware that in recent years, this pattern is no longer what it once was. But even acknowledging this reality, it's still been the practice of the family unit in most monogamous societies. How significant that this week, in our continuing study of the covenant, we see the same pattern developing in God's relationship with his people. When his people responded to his wooing, a covenant relationship was formed. At Sinai, the people were very clear. All that God has said, we will do. How significant that immediately after those formalities, God gives instructions and provides the resources for the construction of a sanctuary where he could dwell amongst his people. It's actually quite a remarkable analogy. Most of us understand the pattern as far as a human relationship is concerned. Could it be, however, that we've actually missed recognising the existence of this same pattern in humanity's covenantal relationship with the eternal God? Think about it. God redeemed his bride. Then God and Israel enter into a covenant relationship. Finally, just as a newly married couple set up home together, so God expresses his desire to dwell with his people. I believe this paints a truly beautiful picture of the God of heaven. Now, before we commence our Bible study this week, please allow me to, to provide a little bit of a suggestion. As you discuss the subject of the week, my experience in ministry suggests that there'll be many who would rather skip over the subject of the sanctuary altogether. Some will remember that it was plagued with controversy in the past. Others simply don't see its practical value. I believe it's worth addressing this issue. I believe it's important, even vital to consider how this study is relevant to the contemporary Bible-based Christian. Please take some time in your fellowship group to discuss this question. Perhaps you could ask it in this way. When our Sabbath school guide speaks of the sanctuary, what image arises in your mind? How would you present the sanctuary so as to share its purpose with an individual who is new to scriptural understanding. Is the sanctuary a subject that you would rather ignore altogether? I, I believe this is an important series of questions. Indeed, I'm actually prepared to guess that if your study group members have any knowledge of the sanctuary, and please remember, many Christians and even Adventists don't, they will imagine a dusty tent that was constructed in the barren wilderness for the benefit of an ancient nomadic people. It's hardly something that appears to be relevant to the contemporary believer. I'm most interested, however, in how your fellowship group defines the purpose of the sanctuary. Some might say the sanctuary was God's house. Others are portable temple. <laughs> These definitions are certainly very accurate. But there's one description, however, that I personally like to share when I'm studying this subject with a new believer. 
It's something the contemporary Australian can readily relate to. Here in Australia, increasingly governments are creating land or marine sanctuaries. These are places where animals can live in safety. I actually like that view of sanctuary. When I'm studying the sanctuary with a new believer, I suggest that God has created a place of safety for his family. Increasingly, I'm trying to present the sanctuary as much more than a building or an object. Rather, I suggest that the sanctuary is in fact a place of safety constructed at God's command for the benefit of those with whom he is in covenantal relationship. Let's look at how this works. On Sunday, we look at the sanctuary from the perspective of a God who is wanting an abiding relationship with his people. This is how it's expressed in Exodus 25.8. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell amongst them. Why not chat about this particular passage? There's so much that is revealed about the type of God we serve in this particular revelation of God. Perhaps you could ask this question. What does Exodus 25.8 say about the character of a God who wants to live in a dusty tent? in the middle of a barren wilderness, to be with a sinful, rebellious, and continually complaining people. On Monday, we're brought to see the full significance of the sanctuary. It's a place of safety for the people of the covenant. So often, we think of the sanctuary as simply a a place of sacrifice. That's true, it is, but consider what is actually going on. Sinners, that's people who have broken the covenant, are called by the God of the covenant not to flee from him, but rather to flee to the place where he dwells. This is not that he might condemn, but rather that he might forgive Do you see how the sanctuary is a place of safety? This is something that I really believe is worth chatting about. Why not discuss this concept? Perhaps you could ask this question. How does viewing the sanctuary as a place of safety speak to those who have rebelled against God? What does it say to those today who are struggling to even forgive themselves? What hope does this provide to those who are ashamed of their past? On Tuesday, we're called to consider the death of the Lamb of God. He's the one to which all previous sacrifice pointed. Remember, in his sacrifice, we have the newness of the new covenant revealed. On Wednesday and Thursday, we spend time considering the high priesthood of the new covenant. What a wonderful revelation we see in the book of Hebrews of Christ ministering on behalf of believers in heaven itself. Do you understand why the author of Hebrews is able to write something that can can only give the repentant sinner the most wonderful hope? This is what it says. Seeing then that we have the great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathise with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Therefore, let us come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. This is a a powerful statement of of wonderful hope. I believe it's really worth talking about. Why not share with your fellowship group? Perhaps you could ask this question. What does it really mean uh, to you to have someone who has experienced all kind of temptation at the throne of God? What does it mean to have a brother who's experienced poverty and hardship, a brother who's been ridiculed, abused and unjustly condemned to hear your every prayer? 
How wonderful is the biblical teaching of the sanctuary? Imagine it. In the scalding wilderness, God Almighty is willing to take up residence in a hot, dusty tent so his people might have a place of safety. The people are then encouraged when they have sinned to run not away from the God of the covenant, but to the God of the covenant. Do you understand why in New Testament days Christ was able to say, come unto me, all you labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's the call of the God of the eternal covenant. He's calling his people to himself. What an amazing God we serve. Thank you so much for joining with us. If you'd like to contact us, we can be contacted at the address on your screen. If you'd like to gain a copy of the script for use in the Sabbath School presentation, it can be downloaded from the Living Ministry Media website. May the Lord richly bless you as you dig deep into the inspired word. Thank you so much for joining with us. Mm -hmm.